Okay, so you guys are new to Escape from Tarkov. The first thing I want to say is welcome to Tarkov. You're in for a heck of a ride. The next thing I want to do is give you guys 64 tips and tricks on how to be a better player right out of the gate. Let's get into it. I will put the timestamps down to all 64 of these tips down in the description below. Feel free to slow down or speed up the video, pause it so you can try out this stuff in the moment, or just flat out go back and rewatch this a few times. Just try and get this drilled into your head. This is important stuff and you will be better off knowing it. All right, tip number one, alt click to instantly put on gear. If you're looting a scav or an enemy player of some sort and they have some gear that you wanna put on, you can alt left click it to instantly put that gear in the slot that it goes in. Just make sure the slot is free. Tip number two, control click to instantly loot things into your inventory. Again, if you're dealing with any containers or scavs or players, you can control left click to instantly put things into your backpack. This saves a lot of time when you're looting, which is a great thing because you don't want to be standing still for too long. Tip number three, press down C and scroll your mouse wheel to adjust crouch height. You can actually adjust from a full standing position all the way down to a full crouch position. This especially helps if you're trying to get a crazy shot through a narrow angle, maybe between some boxes of some sort don't sleep on this one. Tip number four, instead of waiting for the med animation to fully finish, watch your limb's health and when it's full, tab out and spam left click to early cancel the animation. This ends up saving a lot of time when you have to heal every body part. Just as a quick example, you guys can see here, if I go to heal this limb, as soon as it's at full HP, I tab out, I start spamming left click and my animation gets canceled. This is a lot faster than letting the full med animation finish because no matter how much HP you have to heal, it will do the whole animation every time. Tip number four, five, bind grenades and right click to underhand them. So if you guys put a grenade in your pocket or rig, left click on it and then hit a number key, you can then bind it to your hotbar. Then you hit that key, say six for example, it pulls out the grenade, it's in your hand, and you could then right click to underhand the grenade a short distance. This is useful for tossing one right over a wall if you think an enemy is on the other side, or just tossing one a short ways down a hallway or something like that. Tip number six, if you have nothing in your hands, no melee, nothing, you can spam throw grenades and it's absolutely Absolutely ridiculous. So here's an example. I'll put eight grenades in my rig. I have no melee, no gun, and I'm just pressing G as fast as I can. As you can see, the grenades are coming out real fast. Tip number seven, guns have durability and you can repair them. You can double click on a gun to see its durability in the description. All guns you purchase from traders will have full durability. If you get a gun off an enemy, be sure to check it because it might be run down from being ran several raids. Also notoriously, if you ever get an ADAR off of a scav, they always start at like 85 durability. It's pretty broken. That can mess with the accuracy of the gun so just be aware that this is a thing tip number eight hold right click and press control to shift between two sights on a gun so here i have the voodoo scope and a pk06 on top you guys can see if you hold right click hit control i can swap between the two sights long and close range tip number nine on that same note hold right click and press alt to shift between these sights reticles so here on the pk06 i can switch between three different reticles by holding right click and pressing alt same thing with the voodoo scope i can zoom in and out with it tip number 10 Alt T to check what's in your mag. This goes for any gun that has a magazine that you put in. Hit Alt T. It will show you the ammo and how full your mag is roughly. Tip number 11, Shift T to check what's in your gun's chamber. So besides the mag, the gun itself can hold one bullet in the chamber. You can Shift T to check and see if you have a bullet in the chamber. Tip number 12, Shift L to inspect your gun. This does nothing but let you look at how cool your gun is. Tip number 13, Double Tap R to do a combat reload. This reloads your gun a little faster, but drops your old mag on the ground. Every time I'm in a fight, I tend to do a combat reload just so I never lose something because it took me too long to reload. After the fight's over, if I won, I just go back and pick up all the mags off the ground as long as I remember roughly where they are. Tip number 14, press N to pull your face shield or night vision up or down. If you're wearing a helmet that has a face shield or you're using something that has night vision on it, you can press N to turn it off and back on. Tip number 15, when looting multiple guns, make sure you have the biggest gun in your second secondary slot, so that way you have the most space possible in your backpack. In this example here, you can see I have the RSS and I have the MP7 in my backpack. Well, you want to save space by putting the humongous RSS in the secondary, and then that way the only thing that's sitting in the backpack is the tiny little MP7. Versus obviously if I kept the MP7 in the secondary slot and had the RSS in the backpack, that would be a big waste of space. Also pro tip, you can check to see if your gun can fold by right clicking and hit fold or unfold. This can save even more space. And 
also you can take the mag out to make guns smaller most of the time. That's three tips in one, I guess. Anyway, tip number 16. When looting, it can oftentimes be more worth it to take high value single, double, or four slot items over larger items like armor or full size guns. You can control left click attachments off the enemy's gun to loot them a little faster. Tip number 17. Double tap the O key to see how much time is left in the raid and see which extracts you have available to you. Tip number 18. Extracts with the question marks next to them are not always available. To get more information about extracts, we have tip number 19. To see where extracts are, go to the Escape from Tarkov Wikipedia page and search the map you're on. The wiki has high quality, detailed maps that can help you learn the game quicker. Tip number 20. The wiki in general has info on almost everything in the game. Make sure that you use it. I probably pull up the Tarkov wiki at least three times a day every single day. Tip number 21. Double tap Y to pull up your emotes wheel. Tip number 22, right click an action or voice line to bind it to any of your F keys. As you can see here, I'm going to right click thumbs up, bind it to F9, and then when we hit F9, we give a thumbs up, just like that. Tip number 23, this game's jump physics are kind of weird. If you can't jump on something, try jumping sideways to reach higher elevations. Also, don't jump right against something as the game will act like there's some sort of invisible barrier and cut your jump short. Tip number 24, there are a ton of skills in Tarkov that level as you play. For more detail on what they do and how to level them all, check the Tarkov wiki. Tip number 25, you can ensure your gear so if you die and no one takes it, it will come back to you. Tip number 26, you can ensure with different traders. They do offer different return times as well as prices. I pretty much exclusively use Prapper. He is the cheapest. He just takes about 12 hours longer to bring back your gear. The time it takes to come back really doesn't matter to me. Tip number 27, bullets, meds, grenades will not come back to you in insurance, nor will anything you hide inside of an insured backpack, unless it's other insured gear. The traders will never bring back ammo inside mags, they'll never bring back meds or any grenades you had on you, and if you have like say circuit boards or CPU fans inside your insured backpack, none of that loot will come back, just the backpack itself. Tip number 28, if you run out of time in a raid before you extract, you will go MIA and lose all the gear you had. Insured gear won't return to you if you go MIA either, but if you know you're about to go MIA, then dump all your insured gear on the ground, then it will come back to you. Tip number 29, when you die, you can pay therapists to heal you, but you will get more XP from healing yourself in your stash with your own meds. When you are a low level or when a new wipe hits, I like to heal myself so that way I get the most XP in the beginning as possible and I can level up as fast as possible. Tip number 30, keep things you know you need every raid in your secure container. Keys, important meds, extra ammo, that's all the stuff that I keep in the container. Tip number 31, headshots will give you bonus EXP. So if it's possible, take your time, line up the shot, go for a headshot, you'll get more XP, level up faster that way. Tip number 32, do your scav runs as often as possible. A free set of gear every 20 minutes is very strong. Tip number 33, when you complete quest objectives, make sure to turn them in after you exit the raid immediately. Oftentimes, if you go back into a raid before turning in quest objectives and you end up dying, you'll have to do the quest over. Tip number 34, lots of the maps have hidden caches of loot spread around them. I recommend mapgenie.io for a good place to see where they all are. Map Genie is just pretty dope in general. Tip number 35, Therapist often buys things for the most money, followed by Mechanic and then Skier. But always check the flea market first because the item you have may be extremely valuable there. Tip number 36, the flea market unlocks at level 10, currently. I say currently because they have changed the level requirement before, but right now it's level 10. Tip number 37, upgrade your hideout as often as you can. It is not a gimmick. It will make you money, give you buffs, and do a whole lot more for you. Tip number 38, early game armor is really important. Always check to see if the enemy has a higher class armor for you to wear. Tip number 39, also make sure that your armor has high durability. A class 4 armor with 40 durability is better than a class 5 armor with only 10 durability. Tip number 40, repair armor with the traders. Mechanic will cost the most but give you the most durability back. Prapper is cheap but repairs poorly. Tip number 41, left click on meds in your rig and pockets, then click a number 
key to bind it to your hotbar. Then you can use meds by instantly pressing the number. Tip number 42, if you're ever unsure about what meds do, read the description carefully. For example, the Salua med kit can stop light and heavy bleeds, just at very different durability costs. Tip number 43, my go-to med loadout is as follows. Something to heal limbs or light bleeds, a combat painkiller I can use in a pinch like a morphine, a heavy bleed stopper like a hemostat, then I'll keep a surgery kit or CMS kit in my container to heal blacked limbs, splint for fractures, as well as a multi-use painkiller in case I need to keep my painkiller effect going. This never changes, this is what I bring in every single raid. This covers every single base. Tip number 44, press T to use your tactical device like a flashlight or laser if you have one equipped. Tip number 45, press Control T to switch between functionalities of your tactical device. Many of them are lasers, flashlights, or a combination of both. Tip number 46, ammo in Tarkov matters more than anything. Some goes through armor well, some is best used against flesh. Check out the ballistics page on the Tarkov wiki to see which ammo is good for what purpose. You will never win fights in Tarkov unless you're using the right ammo. As a general rule of thumb, people love the highest pen ammos in the game. The highest pen ammo of any class or the second highest pen is generally a really good ammo to use. For example, with like 545 AKs, the Egolnik 7N39 round is the highest pen, that's a great round, and then the BS 545 is the second highest pen. Those are the two best rounds for the caliber and the two most common rounds that people use for the 545 caliber. Leg meta does exist where you use high flesh damage low pen ammo to cripple people by shooting their legs, but that's a different story for a different day. Can't go wrong with high pen. Tip number four. 47. A Lucky Scav Junk Box is one of the best early game purchases that you can make. It holds nearly 200 quest items and valuables at a time. Tip number 48. Doing your quest not only levels you up faster and unlocks the traders, it can also give you great rewards such as multiple endgame cases down the line. This thick weapons case that I have and this thick items case that I have both come from questing. Do not skip your questing. Tip number 49. If you ever have a fracture but no splint, the Grizzly Med Kit and the Sir 12 kit can heal fractures as well. Tip number 50, in the beginning of the game, you can press middle mouse button to examine things instantly. After you've examined everything in the game, you can rebind middle mouse to discard so you can quickly drop things you don't want with the middle mouse button. This comes in handy when you're looting and trying to move quick, that way you can just get everything dropped by the press of a button. Tip number 51, if you time it right, you can b-hop in Tarkov. It's kind of hard to explain, but sometime after you start sprinting, jump. You'll know you hit it because you'll do a noticeably bigger jump. Just practice this on your own, maybe offline. You'll get it eventually. At least at this time, B hopping is possible. Just wanted you guys to know that. Tip number 52. After level 10, when you unlock the flea market, right click a weapon part in your stash and click link search to see what part goes on it. For example, when I link search this M4 barrel, I can see all the muzzle attachments that will go on it. You can use this to kind of help figure out how to build things in the beginning of the game. I know there's like a million parts, a million weapon parts, and it's very complicated. Complicated. I promise after time you will get it in its second nature to you. That being said, I actually didn't make a tip for this one, but once you unlock the weapons workbench, which is an early thing to do in your hideout, you can have presets. If you click on a gun, click edit preset, you can actually go in the top left, name the gun, name the preset, and save it so that way when you want to build that same exact build, you can just search up the preset and it'll pop up so you don't have to remember what parts go on what builds. Tip number 53, right click on an item and hit filter by item to see what that specific item is going for on the flea market. Say you have some food and you want to sell it, you don't know how much to sell it for, right click, filter by item, boom, it tells you right there all the pricings and listings for that item. Tip number 54, press B in a raid to check your fire mode. Always check this when you pick up an enemy's gun. Tip number 55, offline mode is a complete replication of the online game, but you don't lose anything. You also don't gain anything, but it's a perfect way to practice the game. Tip number 56, each map has a certain player count. You can see roughly how many players you expect to find on that map at the map select screen. For example, currently the lab has a maximum 10 players. Tip number 57, the headphones in the game actually help you hear enemy footsteps. They are not just cosmetic. Tip number 58, when heading towards an extract, play safe and cautious. Extract campers are definitely a thing and will be waiting for you. My number one recommendation when you're approaching extract or just moving around in general is to always move near cover. So if you suddenly take fire from an enemy, you at least have something you can hide behind. Keep that in mind as you navigate towards the extract. Always try and move near cover, never through open spaces if you can afford it. Tip number 59, each map has two times you can play at. One will typically be in the day and the other in the night. You can just select which side you want to play
play on right there in the map select screen. Tip number 60, when you kill and loot an enemy player in raid and you like their gear and want to use it, you can dump your own insured gear somewhere hidden and use the enemy gear so you don't risk losing your own. Bonus points if you dump your gear over a fence or in the water where literally no one can get to it. It will definitely come back to you in insurance and with the enemy's gear on, you basically bought yourself a free kit. Tip number 61, check most crates to see if they're lootable. Things you wouldn't expect like suitcases and jackets can be looted. When you're new, everything I know just looks like scenery, but a lot of it can be looted, so make sure you check. Tip number 62, grenades will be used from left to right in your pockets first. So if you have a bunch of F1s in your pocket and a bunch of flash grenades in your rig, all four of the F1s will get used before a flash bang does. That's just the order in which they do it, so just keep that in mind. Tip number 63, glasses help reduce the effects of getting flash banged. It's not by much, but glasses will help negate some of that flash bang effect. But I also do want to mention that glasses have suffered from a bug for the longest time. Basically, at extreme distances, if you see somebody wearing sunglasses, the sunglasses will glow black and it's the most obvious apparent thing that you can see at long range and it really helps enemies spot you. So please be careful when choosing to wear sunglasses, knowing that for a very long time they have been bugged and they make you way easier to spot. But say if you're playing a close range map like Factory and you just want to avoid flashbangs, glasses could be a better option. Long range though, don't really recommend. And tip number 64, follow Battlestate Games on Twitter for updates about Tarkov. I know this is kind of weird, but for now, Tarkov really doesn't do that much as far as in-game messaging to let you know what's going on. Events, wipes, drop events, like free loot events, like so many things go on and are just posted about on Twitter versus ever being talked about in the game. And like it or not, for better or worse, that's just how it is for now. So at the very least, you could even create a throwaway Twitter account just to follow Battlestate, turn on notifications so you never miss any cool events that are going on. And there you have it, guys. That is 64 tips that I hope will help you learn Tarkov and make you a better player. If you guys liked this video, do me a huge favor and give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Also, subscribe to the channel because we put out a ton of Tarkov content and you don't want to miss it. Also, if you guys ever want to come talk Tarkov with me live or you need help or want to ask questions, I am a full-time partner Twitch streamer over at twitch.tv slash finestxi. Come stop by sometime. I'd love to meet you guys. Links for that will be down below as well as links to all my socials. That being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. Good luck out there in Tarkov and I'll see you in the next one.